and succulent growers, it's Lynn. And in today's video, I'm going to be have a bit of a fun video going through all my aloes, gasterias, hawarthias and small agaves, giving them all a pruning from the dead leaves. Now it's coming to the end of summer and also putting away some of these uh, aloes and gasterias and a couple of adramistias there that I've been repotting over the past week. So obviously I need to find space to put them and rearrange this a bit nicer. Also here on this very bottom shelf, I have got some large aloes. These two big pots here are aloes that I've grown from seed back in, I think it was 2015. And uh, they are huge now. But when I put them in there, the beginning of the, I think it was very late winter, I, mo I moved them at the back. They've grown a lot since, as you can see, and they're in between these bars. So I'm going to have to pull this. It's actually two plant stands together. Pull this one away and uh, then I have to somehow manoeuvre these underneath to get them out. And they're going to be putting all of these big aloes here, moving this big crassula bowl into a different part in the greenhouse and then putting all these underneath there next to this very large aloe vera plant as you can see it's a big beauty and uh, that's what I'm gonna be doing today and pruning off dead leaves as you can see on there making them a bit of a revamp so just gonna be showing you in different stages in this video what I'm going to be doing also the floor underneath I'm gonna give the floor a lovely lovely clean so it's all spotless these are two um, of the shelf covers here that I'm gonna be using to put on here when I take these out and then I can put all of these underneath and obviously putting the the taller ones towards the back smaller towards the front so it looks aesthetically pleasing and taking some of these succulents off into a different part of the of the greenhouse and rearranging this a little bit so thought I'd share that with you and uh, make a little bit of a video now I have made many videos on how to care for um, aloes gasterias and uh, all, all the like so I will link a load of videos down below in the video description if you want to know how to care for aloe and how to care for gasteria and also I've made a special video just on how to prune the dead leaves from aloes so do check that video out if you want to watch a bit more detailed this is more of a video vlog of just me doing doing little plant jobs with them today so I'll link that video up above and also down below in the video description. When it sort of comes towards the end of summer, sort of early autumn, fall, this is when I want to sort of go through a lot of the plant tables and give them all a bit of a tidy up and a revamp, remove dead leaves. I'm gonna be doing the same with all of these succulents as well over the next couple of weeks. And even with all the, the cacti, I mean, they look great as they are, but I like to just go and check all under the pots, all under the necks of them and everything like that. Probably gonna be sprinkling the trays with diatomaceous earth to stop any crawling bugs from um, going onto other plants and things like that so I'm gonna be busy, very busy doing plant jobs but I thought I'd make a start with the aloes gasterias and hawarthias now that's all the big aloes that were underneath I managed to take them out except for one my aloe arborescens all grown from seed and luckily because it's quite bendy I'm hoping I can sort of turn it on its side and sort of slip it out of here because I suddenly realised when I thought oh I can pull this this stand away because it's two together I've actually tied it there and I don't really want to have to pull it out I'm gonna to have to take everything off rather than just rearrange it so hopefully I can slide this out and then I'll be able to give this floor a really good clean Oh, I think I'm going to do it. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, oh. I've done it guys. I managed to get that out from underneath. Yay, I am so glad I got this one out and without any damage to the leaves. So now I've got this free here and I'm going to give the floor a really good clean because there's lots of grit and everything falling off and I'm going to then um, prune the dead leaves off these. Now that's the floor all clean there and then I've put the racks on onto the shelves and so now I can put more plants onto there and now I'm going to get to pruning the dead leaves off uh, this big aloe now. I have made a video already on how to prune the dead leaves off aloe. So as I mentioned earlier on, if you haven't seen that video, do check it out. The video will be up above and down below in the video description. But I'm just going to show you a little bit here what I'm going to be doing. 
obviously a few people say to me can you just leave these leaves well you can do but I find that they tend to especially in the winter time can get things like mold and fungus plus aesthetically and I know looks far nicer when it's got all the green leaves and all these old dried up dead leaves hanging off it so it's going to tidy it up a bit here so you just want to get back right down to the very base just pull it off sometimes you can just take twist them as well they come off very easy especially when they're very crunchy and dry but if they're a little bit hard to remove just get the scissors or some pruny shears and just take it as close to the the base of the stem as possible i also want to mention i've done a video as well about these these black brown spots now this is called aloe black spot and i think it's a type of fungus a little bit what roses get as well you sometimes see them on roses and other types of plants it's a bit like with the roses it it doesn't harm it doesn't harm in my experience it doesn't definitely not kill the aloe and it doesn't even spread to the others either as you can see this one has got it all these other ones in this bowl this is a group of very large sort of post seedling stage as i say i sowed the sowed the seed in 2015 and uh, it seems to be pretty harmless and i sometimes find that the new growth as you can see here this leaf the new growth doesn't have the black spots on I don't really know 100% what causes it other than I think it's some type of fungus that doesn't spread and I sometimes treat it with a copper fungicide spray. I find the neem oil also does help to stop it from spreading as I mentioned it doesn't spread onto the other plants in my experience just spreads onto the other leaves on that the plant itself it's sort of quite an isolated thing. I've made a whole video on aloe black spot as well so do check that out I'll link the video up above and also down below and I sometimes notice it on some gasterias as well some of my gasterias have had this sort of black spotting and then all the new growth then continues to be healthy I think it could be a change in the environment you know sometimes from being very cold and hot here in the polytunnel it gets when the sun comes out even now it's sort of late summer early early fall it gets very very hot in here and um, I think that can also be you know a lot the problem as well with lack of ventilation we do have the door always wide open on the warm days like today even in the winter we'll often have the door open for the ventilation even if it's cold because you need that fresh moving air and uh, I don't know if that has anything to do with it or not but as it only affects certain types of aloes and not the others it's a bit of a mystery now that's the first um, big aloe there all nicely pruned so it's all nice fresh green leaves and now what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be cleaning up under this side now under this table and we're taking this big crassula bowl out moving this huge big aloe vera over to the side and uh, making giving all this a good clean underneath and then it's going to give me room then to put these in that's the floor all nice and clean under there and uh, now I'm just going to prune the dead leaves of this very large aloe vera plant and then I'm going to push that one into the corner so here we go more pruning where do i start with all this oh let me start with this one here it's half a dead leaf and while i'm pruning this big aloe uh, vera just sort of give you a bit of a tip excuse the pun when aloes sometimes get these dry tips here now sometimes it's normal when the the bottom leaves start to die off as i mentioned pruning them off this will start here and it will go all the way down but if it seems to be some of the new leaves that are going sort of dry at the tips this is a sign that you need to repot your aloe because they get very root bound quite quickly and I have to repot all of my aloes usually every couple of years I have to give them a major root pruning as well and another another video guys I made a whole video on that on how to prune the roots on aloes and everything so all them videos will be down below but this this one is clearly showing signs that it it's in a huge pot already but it does need to be repotted and uh, that's going to be for another day obviously but just let you know that tip sometimes when it's just the very tips that sort of halfway down on the new growth that is going brown that's a sign that the root it's very root bound and it needs to be repotted now that's then first two under the table there and the good thing is with aloes they they do like sun 
but they can also take a little bit of part shade. Personally, in my experience, I find my aloes do better with a bit of part shade. Otherwise, they tend to go very red or deep colours. You can see here that's had a lot of direct sun. So I push them slightly underneath the table so they still get plenty of sun, also some direct sun, but they're not on top of the table or pulled forward in front of the table so they get all day sun. So although our greenhouse here polytunnel is green covered with the bubble it's got bubble wrap as well it does let a lot of direct sun onto the plant so they do get plenty of sun and I'm just going to remove the dead leaves off um, this one here as I say these two bowls are ones I've grown from seed this is aloe arborescens this is this is aloe um, elgonica elgenica I should say and I grow these from seed back in 2015 and the seed was given to me by my wonderful friend Rachel at gardening at Dwenza here on YouTube and they've grown remarkable and if you want to know how to grow aloe from seed it's very easy then I'll also link up above and down below in the video description on a video on how to grow aloe from seed there we go that's all them three all nicely pruned and put a uh, a little bit underneath the table there but still with plenty of light all the dead leaves there and now I'm going to be putting some more of the taller ones I think I'm going to put these two big beauties underneath nearly done I'm just uh, tidying up this bulbine now this bulbine um, it looks very very similar to an aloe but it's not actually an aloe it's a bulbine bulbine um, cookescans and a beautiful plant so I'm going to be moving all the dead leaves off this one too just want to mention as well the reason why I love to go through all the plants and for example the aloes gasterias or warthers and the little ag agaves today is because when you when I sort them out I like to check for pests and actually found some what looks like mealy bug nests I don't know where you can see there and um, I do treat the plants regularly with neem oil and spray them in, with rubbing alcohol and that but I don't know if that's a mealy bug nest or not but I'm not going to take any chances so I'm going to use a bit of rubbing alcohol dabbed on there just in case so do inspect your plants carefully underneath the pots and everything like that to make sure they're all clean now that's all under the table all done all uh, lovely and I put the bulbine here and bulbine by the way although it, as I mentioned it's very aloe like it's not it is for, it's an, another succulent plant from South Africa like the aloes but it's actually part of the lily family but it grows very well with the same type of care as the aloes it just does like a bit more regular watering though so now I'm left with all these on the floor and uh, these lot on here but I'm going to rearrange them so they look a little bit better and as, as I mentioned I like to take everything off just to go through everything for check check for pests and also a lot of these dead flower flower stems now from the Hawarthias need to be cut off because they've gone a couple are still flowering so I'll be leaving them on and I'm very happy to say my Hawarthia pygmy my little miniature Hawarthia here is in flower spike for the first time so I'm really excited about that so that's obviously going to be staying in the same place a lot of these are probably going to be more or less in the same position when I put them back but they do need a good pruning and a check-in and as do all of these on here too that's the top shelf all emptied there and the two bottom shelves all emptied and I'm going to start putting some plants now that are all on the floor back onto the top and then sort of do these ones and these ones because there's a lot to get through and uh, just want to show you I've put them all into sort of groups all the adramistrus and similar looking ones as well this one here is an is an Anna Anacampseros beautiful beautiful succulent and uh, it's coming into flower spike as well it has beautiful sort of pinky purpley blooms so that's gonna be amazing when that blooms again these ones are all sort of like the South African varieties so now it's sort of coming up to the fall these sort of come into a bit of a growth spurt this one as well this adramistra is also coming into flower spike so they do very well sort of very late summer into the autumn fall time so what I'm going to be doing is putting the ones that I know like a little bit more shade 
on the, the bottom shelf because I have a little bit more shade from the ones on the top. This is one of my uh, Hawarthias and it's one of the very first plants I ever had in my collection. I was about 11, 12 when I first got this and uh, as you can see it's got a bit of dry tips and it's also got a bit of a deep burgundy red colour and that's because it's been on the top shelf. We've had a very, very, very sunny summer and it's had a bit too much sun. I usually find that Hawarthias sort of do a little bit better with a bit of shade. So this is going to sort of green up a bit if I put it at the very bottom shelf this little flower spike i'm just going to pull out because it's all dried now gone goes like straw when they come out this one is still still going as i say little tiny flower there so i'm going to leave that one on but um i'm going to put a few at the bottom a few at the top and then show you what it looks like when i've done it now before going any further i forgot to mention as well because these aloes gasterias and hawarthias up for me anyway late summer sort of early fall into the middle even to the even sometimes into the winter growers and certainly flowers i do still continue to water these very lightly throughout the fall and also into the winter and uh, very very different to the cacti and even a lot of the succulents like the echeveria is that i keep them totally dry from sort of the middle of sep middle to the end of september until the following april but with these type of succulents they are sort of autumn and early winter growers so i will still be giving these a very just enough water just to so the roots don't dry out to keep them going but certainly I don't water them as much as I would do in the height of summer because obviously it's going to be cold in here and they don't like the cold and the damp so I'm very very careful with watering but just mention that um, I will still be continuing to water these lightly until the next uh, sort of probably until late October so it's a bit of a difficult one when it comes to the watering I did make a video the other day on when do I stop watering my cacti and succulents is a different thing and there's so many different types of succulents some like a completely dry dormancy like the echeverias graptopatalums but some of them um, certainly the aloes and gasterias and hawthers in my experience do like to have a little bit of water slightly until sort of the early winter time so um, that's a whole new video in itself again i'm putting sort of plants away in order not, not only in their light requirements but also in their heat because it's a lot warmer here on the top shelf so we're probably going to be using our dehumidifier a lot more this year than our electric heater because of the huge rising electric costs so obviously i couldn't afford to have the heater blaring on all the time so the dehumidifier is a fraction of the cost and it does give off quite a bit of heat as well so as long as we have a mild winter it should be okay this particular aloe here this aloe vera garter does like more heat than some of the other aloes so this one is going on the top shelf because it usually the heat rises up here and it's going to get a lot of sun as well but i find in the summer this gets too much sun upon the top shelf but in the winter months it's fine upon the top shelf which is why i sort of rearrange everything in the spring and then rearrange things again when it's in the autumn time so uh, not only to give me a chance to go through all of the plants and remove dead leaves and check for bugs and things like that but also i can put the plants in their requirements for what they need in their light levels and also their heat levels so i made a bit of a start there now this um this is a uh, hawarthia Hawarthia Suzanne, which is a new Hawarthia got and its little babies there and i'm actually going to give this a bit more sun because when in the summertime I put that down on the second shelf on the other table to give a bit more shade and uh, I think now it's sort of coming up to the fall it'll be fine there I think it's a lovely looking plant and it's going to be a nice uh, feature on there too so I'm going to be taking some plants from here moving them on here some from here over there all these on the floor rearranging and I think what I'm going to do rather than bore you with a video with loads and loads of video clips I'm just going to Mention they hear what obviously what I'm going to be doing and then show you what it looks like when it's all being done. Now this is a perfect example of an aloe that's had a bit too much sun. This is my aloe bakery and I had that on the top shelf on there and it sort of gets sun all day and as I mentioned we've had an extremely hot sunny summer and the temperatures in this polytunnel have reached 125 degrees Fahrenheit many days it wouldn't be that outside but it would be close to 80 Fahrenheit outside we've had a very hot summer hot hot anyway here for Ireland <laughs> probably not for many other people but uh, the polytunnel just cooks even though we have the door wide open we have two fans blaring away plenty of ventilation it's still too hot so this one definitely needs to green up a little bit and i'm going to be putting this one under the shelf at the bottom there with the other with the uh, hawarthia and uh, also with our uh, aloe another aloe algenica that i've grown from seed as well so that's going to do well we're going to get plenty of light still but a little bit more shade 
Now that's the top and the bottom shelves all sorted as well as all of these on the very bottom there and I'll show you what I've put up here. I've got um, a mixture of aloe, hawarthia and I've got my adra mistresses as well because they're quite sun loving and although this gasteria here can take a bit more shade that's why it's going to be red there with the sun it's a large plant and it's a lovely specimen so I wanted that on the top and again there uh, hawarthia Suzanne and uh, my edromistress at the back and my aloe black gem I've put up there as well because that sort of goes a lovely sort of deep burgundy colour in full sunshine which it's meant to do that's why it's called black gem and uh, should do really well and what I'm going to be doing now is all of these on here these look pretty much okay but I'm going to take them out anyway because I need to remove dead leaves as you can see there and I need to check under the pots and remove any dead flower spikes and tidy them up a bit and then I'm going to put some uh, probably take some of these put, maybe put some of them under there move some of them and uh, do a bit more rearranging so first of all I'm going to remove all this second shelf that's them two shelves all cleared there and these are a lot of the plants all on the floor so I'm going to be going through them checking for pests and cutting off dead leaves and then putting the putting them back onto here and show you what it looks like when it's all done. These old dried up flower spikes can just be removed with a pair of scissors or sometimes pulled out here once they're finished flowering. That's the second shelf done and I've put some gasterias and uh, some aloes and uh, hawarthias as well, a mixture of them all nicely arranged and they've all been pruned all the dead flower heads and flower heads that are still going and forming I've made sure not to prune them off, off obviously and uh, all looking good now I'm just starting on the third shelf woohoo that's this stand completely done with um, aloes, gasterias, hawarthas and some of the agaves on there and uh, I've just got this stand to sort out and these are the only ones I've got left to put away so I'm going to rearrange some of these and put them on there probably going to be left with the, the two bottom shelves free which is going to be great because I've got lots of seedlings that are sort of old enough to overwinter in the polytunnel this year some are a few years old that I normally have in the grow room and they can probably go at the bottom there so I'm not quite sure yet but there's plenty of space I seem to have made a lot more space which is great and these I'm going to sort out obviously these um, cedar morganiums are going to stay here because they look lovely hanging down as is this lovely Crassula marginalis very beautiful and uh, this one as well now these ones guys I just want to mention these look very aloe like but they're actually um, dikias and I'll just show you the name here Dikea or Dikea, I'm not sure how it's exactly pronounced, Fosteriana. I've got three of these and these are actually related to the Bromeliard family. And they're like an arid Bromeliard and obviously like the air plants, also part of the Bromeliard family. They like to be kept quite dry, a little bit of watering and they do very well in a greenhouse and uh, growing with other succulents so very lovely variety here so I always keep them with the aloes because they're very aloe like but they are actually a bromeliard so um, very unusual indeed gorgeous plants so I'm going to be keeping them on the top shelf obviously just removing some of the dead leaves and things like that that's all I've got left to do so here on this shelf here I've got a mixture as I mentioned of aloes gasterias hawarthias same on here as well so I think it looks great and then down below here I've got some more, a lot of the ones at the back here, I've got aloes that I've rooted in water and I've potted them up. So they're recently potted up and they're sort of still taking part of their roots, still taking root, so they need a bit more shade. Still plenty of light at the back for them. Here I've got the agaves, the small agaves, they need more direct full sun. So I've got them at the front of the stand here where they're going to get a lot of sunshine. And the reason why this one is in a very small pot is because when I went to repot it in the spring, it had a very bad case of root mealybugs. So I just had to cut all the roots off, completely take it as a cutting and it's starting to re-root and sort of fatten up again, which is really good news. So um, looking good. And then as I say, the bottom shelf. So now I've just got this to rearrange and then I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's all completely done. Woohoo, that's it all fully completed. 
all aloes, gasterias, hawarthias and the little agaves all being rearranged and uh, cleaned, checked for pests and uh, displayed a little bit differently and I hope, hope you sort of enjoyed this video, sorry if it's a little bit long guys but it was, I thought I'd just share it with you and I do a bit of rearranging and I put the uh, Euphorbia sudanica and the patchy podium back where it was and I've got two shelves free I've made a lot more space I don't know why but maybe it's because I've just pushed things a little bit closer together and rearranged things so that's good the shelves will be handy for the winter when I've been plants in into the polytunnel to overwinter and uh, wonderful such a good job to get done and thank you so much for watching everybody if you haven't done already please do subscribe don't forget to click the notification bell give the video a like as well and also do check out my website desertplantsofavalon.com for regular articles and also lots of care tips on how to grow and care for cacti and succulents i want to wish you all an incredible plant powered 